good evening everybody it's a great pleasure to preside over a function where dr subramanya swami is going to be uh, to give the lecture and he is the chief guest i have known him for over uh, 20 years roughly he is one of the most brilliant minds in the country and as uh, dr uh, t h choudhary has said he is a one man army and what he has done to expose corruption in this country i don't think the entire setup of the government of india all the vigilance commissions all the cbi and then um, you know cbc enforcement nobody could have done that and that is what he has achieved by his case in the 2g scam now that introduction part was skipped in the beginning everybody knows dr swami so there is no need for introduction but still i must say as i said he is one of the most brilliant incisive minds his analysis you can't find fault with that that's why when he files a case against somebody i think they shiver in their pants the others you know um uh, he once told me that he made certain allegations when he was abroad correct allegations against uh, mrs gandhi and the congress party got very annoyed and so what they did was they filed a case against him defamation case in one of the us courts so he said fine there is no problem at all but congress cannot file this case mrs gandhi should file because i have said things against mrs gandhi and then let her come to the court because i want to cross examine her that's what he was planning so they withdrew the case you know the congress party withdrew the case they did not proceed with the case one more thing i must tell you when i was home secretary and i have been associated with the home ministry for a very long time almost about 14 years dr subramanian swami on a couple of occasions had told me certain things relating to intelligence and they were so shocking my own intelligence bureau did not know those things and when i asked dr swami i checked up with the ib later on they all proved to be correct then i asked him once sir where do you get this information i mean even our ib could not get this information even after you mentioned this they took quite some time to verify that how did you get this information he said padmanabhaya don't forget i have students spread all over the world and they are in high positions and they know the truth and then they tell me i mean they may not tell your ib but they would tell me that is the depth of the knowledge he has now coming back to the so we are grateful that he is here coming back to the subject the subject is india in crisis how do we save our nation dr uh, choudhury garu has mentioned various things about how the nation is in crisis i mean nobody doubts that it is in crisis but whatever he has mentioned are the causes are the symptoms of that illness now what is the illness that i would leave it to dr subramanian swami to diagnose you know on that but let me tell you the status of uh, this illness i have been with the government for about 50 years i i quit recently in these 50 years i have never seen a situation as bad as it is today i am not exaggerating i think this is the worst that could be reached in the country's uh, governance now in addition to whatever he has said there can be i mean i can fill the whole hour mentioning what is wrong but let me ask why is this like this why is country in a crisis don't we have the resources don't we have the brains don't we have the manpower human resources i think this country has one of the richest human resources anywhere in the world as far as natural resources also are concerned i think we may not be the richest but we certainly have more than sufficient uh, mineral and uh, forest and water resources now then what is the crisis i think the crisis is one of management governance there nothing else other than this i think if we have a good government i think india would be one of the top most top rung of the uh, society you know that means what i think the will to rule or the will to govern or will to do the right thing is missing from the government that is the only thing that is missing you know and how do we make them get that will i don't know that is another thing which i would leave it to him but let me give you a couple of examples how they do and without really meaning to do anything 
it's a it's a make believe world you know whatever laws they pass they are all very defective laws i would give you an example binami properties attachment act it was passed in 1988 how many years is it now god knows 25 years or whatever it is i don't think there is a single prosecution under that particular act do you know why because the they have not designated the competent authority under that particular act you know till very recently till about 3 4 years ago there were no rules framed under that particular act so the act continues to be there isn't it tamasha another example i would give you under pressure from the international community for a long time in 1999 actually they pressurized the government saying that you must pass a prevention of money laundering act and ultimately government woke up and then they took 2 3 years and 2002 they passed that act and again the rules were not framed and the law was so defective not a single prosecution could take place so they had amended it in 2005 for the first time and then framed the rules and again made another amendment in 2009 or so and i think now a couple of cases are being uh, dealt under that so like this i can give you tens and tens of examples you know on this now cbi investigative agencies and all that the case went to the supreme court that vinith narayan's case 1997 in 1997 supreme court has said that cbi must be independent from the government an autonomy as far as their working is concerned that's what they have said they have repeated it in two three other cases but nothing happens it is still under the government and though they lip sympathy you know um, they say it is independent everybody knows how it is you know then this ailing of the nation the india in crisis it not only affects the government it also affects the private sector the corporate sector he had written a book some years ago satyam sundaram um, spectrum so i don't know how many of you have read that incidentally he is a great writer he has written over 15 books you know on various subjects now in that book he has mentioned about the corporate uh, corruption but look at this case one of the best business schools in the country is in hyderabad the indian school of business but almost everybody connected with that has something or the other they have been thrown out they were involved in some scandal or the other one of them is now right now facing a, a trial in uh, uh you york you know so it has not spared anybody so the crony capitalism and corruption are the topmost issues now and unless these are tackled and corruption what it has done to our public sector i would just give two cases air india it used to be our maharaja the maharaja has gone uh, not even a beggar you know i mean they are looking everywhere for some money to save themselves look at bsnl bsnl used to make thousands of crores of profits today it is in a loss of about 7000 crores in a couple of years it has gone to that position why i think one needs to look at these things now what needs to be done what needs to be done is government answer seems to be only one you keep hearing in the newspapers allow uh, uh, fdi in retail sector allow fdi in uh, uh, sort of services bring it more into insurance in banking in uh, airlines is this the answer for us now what is wanting is your industry is not growing your manufacturing is not going unless you have a base there obviously nothing can be done so this is all a, a sort of make believe world you know just to fool the people and nothing beyond that take the case of andhra pradesh itself somebody has described it as the what corruption capital of the country ccc like the ppp you know you have public uh, uh, private partnership now ccc can be uh, sort of there now i am quite worried about this ppp business also i think one has to be in future very very careful about how these ppps would work the cag is already asking that he should be given power to uh, audit those things also now the point i wanted to mention is in andhra pradesh even though so much has happened and so much is happening they are cancelling these land land allotments you know you have been reading in the newspapers okay you cancel the allotments but what further action are you taking against the fellows who has passed those orders in the first instance is it not necessary that you must do something 
<coughs> so the point is uh, yeah i mean this is the state of the nation so i don't want to take more time uh, you have all come to hear uh, dr subramanyam swami so uh, i would uh, sort of uh, finish my speech here and i would request dr subramanyam swami to take over thank